heritage and development. We deliver the happenings in the world of economics and entertainment. We also expose ills threatening the destiny of our common patrimony. LNTV News, first, fast and factual. Live. Catch it if you can.
all sectors, including civil society organizations, to step up their advocacy. We keenly recognize that gender-based violence remains a major threat to the human security of women, girls, boys, and children across Liberia and the world. However, Liberia strives for the attainment of the fundamental objectives of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence continues to be greeted by same challenges. It may interest you to know that as, as of the previous January through September of 2017, a total of 892 GBV cases were reported, of which 506 were rape cases. In 2016 alone, a total of 1,413 gender-based violence cases were reported, among which 778 were rape cases. With these frightening statistics, it is glaringly evidential that the challenges of tackling gender-based violence in Liberia, especially the crime of rape, are simply daunting, particularly when 97% of gender-based violence survivors in Liberia are women and girls. This plaguing trend suggests that women and girls are the most vulnerable to rape and different forms of gender-based violence across Liberia and the global world. Gauging from the few and many crushing challenges, we cannot overemphasize the profound significance of the 16 days of activism against gender based violence. We must continue to remain, we must continue to remind perpetrators of these dreadful acts that violence against women and girls and boys and people of the vulnerable population is a gruesome violation of fundamental human rights and must therefore be resisted in the most vehement terms. We must also continue to break our silence on the role of patriarchal systems that embody unacceptable social practices and judicial systems and policies that are reluctant for proactively responding to abuses against women, girls, boys, and children. Gender Minister Wilhelmita Siddhartha speaking well for his part. The United Nations Resident Coordinator in Liberia Yakub Ehilo read a special statement from United Nations General Secretary or Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Violence against women and girls is a global pandemic. It is a moral affront to all women and girls and to us all, a mark of shame on all our societies and a major obstacle to inclusive equitable and sustainable development. At its core, violence against women and girls in all its forms is a manifestation of a profound lack of respect, a failure by men to recognize the inherent equality and dignity of women. It is an issue of fundamental human rights. The violence can take many forms, from domestic violence to trafficking, from sexual violence in conflict to child marriage, genital mutilation and femicide. It is an issue that harms the individual but also has far-reaching consequences for families and societies. Violence experienced as a child is linked to vulnerability and violence later in life. Other consequences include long-term physical and mental health impacts and costs to individuals and society in services and lost employment days. United Nations Resident Coordinator Jakob Ehido reading a special statement from the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the beginning of the 16th day activism here in Liberia, where the Minister of Commerce has announced the arrival of over 1.4 million gallons of petroleum products in the country. In a press conference, Monday Commerce Minister Wilson Topper says this will boost the provision of, pro of petroleum products until January 2019. Today, A tanker carrying 12,000 metric tons, approximately 1.4 million gallons, which is equivalent to 10 days supply. Birth last night, 
and by the close of the day, it should complete discharge. We are informed by Total that on Wednesday, another vessel is coming in with 4,000 metric tons. That is approximately 1.4 million. As a matter of fact, the 12,000 metric ton is about 4.8 million gallons. The 4,000 metric ton is about 1.4 million gallons. And that should be sufficient to carry us throughout the season around the middle of January. NP, which has also been cooperative, is bringing in a large consignment. I don't know the exact quantity, but it's something that's going to add on to what we already have. So you can see that the government has made significant efforts, and our petroleum importers have been extremely cooperative. I want to inform the Labyrinth people on behalf of the government, the Ministry of Commerce, and the Labyrinth Petroleum Refining Company that we have enough product in the town, and anybody hoarding it will be doing so at their own expense. So we want to assure the public that they should not panic. We have enough product on the market. Commerce Minister there was in Tapen. Meanwhile, he says commerce inspectors will soon be on the field to regulate petroleum importers and convoys. And those people who are attempting to hoard the product our inspectors are out, and when we come across you with the full weight of the law, we have to fall upon you. Nobody is supposed to sell gas in Monrovia for three dollars from three dollars and seventy cents or five hundred and eighty dollars Liberia. That's the price. Campbell. Well, those are the people who are outside of our control regime because they don't have a stable place. But we also are monitoring them to ensure that they sell the product for no more than five hundred and eighty dollars per gallon of gasoline. But if they are caught, uh, if they are caught, I just told you the full weight of the law will fall on it. The importers to ensure that the product is available, it's affordable, and the prices are stable. Even though we do not control the international prices of fuel, but the president has made a commitment that effort should be made to ensure that the prices are relatively. Commerce Minister there, Wilson Tabe, well, the plenary of the House of Representatives has passed a motion of contempt against the hot paper newspaper managing editor, Philip Brown. It followed his alleged refusal to appear before the lawmakers. Nima County Representative Larry Yankwe read the motion in plenary. <laughs>
We are here today to call attention to these issues and to request our government to take action. Basically, they must put their money where their mouth is. We are reminded by many cases, and I'm going to list a few. The case of Man Noah who died in Banga, who was murdered in 1998, the marketeer. The travesty of justice in India Topaz case, 12 women who were publicly humiliated in Sino County in 2018, being accused of witchcraft. The, former, the case of the, the young girl who was raped by the former equip director and was granted, and he was granted medical leave to date has been no justice. Last year we witnessed the rape of a 13 year old girl by her uncle who was a member of the, of the legislature. Today there are many more cases we could go on naming a lot, a lot of these cases. So we are here to remind all of us that women's rights are human rights and we need action. Kevin Brown, a campaigner for women and girls' rights, but a member of that body still, Fasia Harris, challenged women to always report gender-related offenses. Basically, this campaign, we are only asking right, for our rights to be protected as women and girls in Liberia. Is that okay? Is that something we want? We are asking that the government will protect us in schools. The government will protect our children while they go to school. Will ensure that those who have schools, who have organizations, protect women and girls. And don't allow women or girls to be raped or molested within the institution. And let's say, God forbid, excuse. Oh, is that a God forbid, excuse if we say it happened to somebody. We want the right action to be taken, the people responsible to be brought to justice. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that something that we want? Yeah. That is why we have that we are all protected. We have made several demands to government concerning rape and sexual gender-based violence in general and to also look into the case that happened at the Modern Me Academy. The children are there, they are our sisters, they are Liberians, they are human beings, and they deserve all rights over their body. No man, no teacher, no supervisor is supposed to take advantage of our children when they go to school. And if it happens, and you know it happening, you need to report it. But when you're reporting it, we need to make sure that people who are reporting it so will take action. That nobody will sweep it under the table, right? So we say we are all protected for many years. We've been crying in the country here yeah, for rape and sexual gender-based violence. We got the criminal code in that the government established. But why is it that we still have many cases not prosecuted? How many prosecutors we have to prosecute rape cases? How many lawyers are there to stand for you and myself in case somebody violated our right by raping us when we go complain? If you're just coming our way, reminder you're watching Ellen TV News Live coming to you from Pinesville, outside of the nation's capital, Monrovia. My name is Edward Tamba, anchor in tonight's edition of this program and the big stories we're telling you tonight. The Ministry of Commerce announces the arrival of sufficient petroleum products in the country. 16 days of activism kicks off in Monrovia as President George Manawi attempts sexual gender based violence as the most shameful human rights violation. House of Representatives passes a motion of contempt against the publisher of the hot paper, the hot paper newspaper, Philibert Brown. And away from whom an average of 137 women across the world are killed by a partner or a family member. We take a very short break to be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Commercial drivers are calling on the government to reduce what they call the increased license fees and the number of checkpoints on the highway. Speaking to LNTV News, the president of the Federation of Road Transport Union of Liberia, Papa Flumo, said about 10 drivers have been arrested for staging protests against the situation. 
difficult challenges. Nurses face the worst challenges. Nurses are deployed nationwide in remote, in remote parts of Liberia. What we can say is hats off to those who are working in the remote areas. Everyone feels the pinch of his own shoe, irrespective of difficult circumstances. Nurses are expected to perform excellently at their job sites. The urban areas are better than the rural areas with poor road, road network, poor housing, and bad facilities. There should be a difference in the compensation that is given to those nurses that are assigned in the rural, rural area. It is expected that after the three days of training and discussions, nurses will meet the health care needs of the society. For LNTV News, I am Rachel Colley reporting. Many thanks to Rachel Colley for that report. The National Teachers Association of Liberia Secretary General Samuel Johnson is calling on the government of Liberia to allot 20% of the national budget to education to meet the sustainable development goal. Mr. Johnson addressed a press conference on Monday in Monrovia following his election at the Education International Africa Conference held in Abidjan, the Côte d'Ivoire. At the conference, we were opportune to be elected as Education International Africa Zone 2 Executive Board Member for Cape Verde, Gambia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Sahara, and Senegal. Seven countries are in Zone 2. Africa is divided into six zones, and we are in Zone 2. Uh, we attended the conference. Several things were discussed recommendation for the improvement of education in Africa, especially the sustainable development goal number four. By 2030, it should be achieved. It was not achieved in 2015, the education for all. The IFA goal was not achieved. So this trip, we are fighting hard to ensure that the sustainable development goal be achieved for every country. So this is why we are part of the move for education advocacy campaign where government will allocate at least 20 percent of the national budget towards education within the 2019-2020 budget so that global campaign for education will be able to increase liberal budgetary support when we started the advocacy at the beginning of the year the gpe through one of our member who is now the secretary general for the teachers around the world david edward who is member of gpe board lobby with her colleagues and they were able to add additional 5.9 million to the 11.9 million that were approved for Liberia. Which Samuel Johnson is the Secretary General of the National Teachers Association of Liberia. Away from whom now an average of 137 women across the world are killed by a partner or a family member every day according to a new data released by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. They say it makes the home the most likely place for a woman to be killed. According to the BBC, more than half of the 87,000 women killed in 2017 were reported as dying at the hands of a close relative. BBC says of the figure approximately 30,000 women were killed by an intimate partner and another 20,000 by a relative. Africa was uh, where women ran the greatest risk of being killed by their intimate partner or family member, the UN report says. It occurred at a rate of 3.1 deaths per 100,000 persons. Asia had the greatest number of women killed by intimate partner or family member in 2017, with a total of 20,000. BBC said press conferences covered in, 20, in, in October 1 of 2018 around the world accounted for 47 women reportedly killed, apparently for gender-related issues in 21 countries across the world. And three Chinese nationals have been charged with attempting to bribe in investigators working on an alleged 
ticketing scam in the massive Kenyan Airway project. Some one that's ten thousand dollars a day was being stolen in the scam. A local media say officials were allegedly offered five thousand bribe. The prosecutor say that brings us to the end of tonight's presentation of LN TV News Live. Before let go of your reminder of the big stories will follow tonight. The Ministry of Commerce announces the arrival of sufficient petroleum product till January 2019. 16 days of activism kicks off in Monovia as President George Mane we are terms sexual gender-based violence as the most shameful human rights violation. The House of Representatives passes a motion of contempt against the publisher of the hot paper newspaper Philippe Brown and away from whom an average of 137 women across the world are killed by a partner or a family member every day. Many thanks to all of you for watching Ellen TV News Live. Many thanks to all of our contributors, reporters, and switchers for making this edition a success on behalf of the entire production team here at the Liberia National Television. My name is Edward Tama. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.